Welcome back to another episode of Salty Reef TV, where today we're going to take a look at another prototype. Today's is from Ecotech Marine. It's a first of its kind, designed by Ecotech Marine. 36 volt DC return pump featuring quiet drive technology, also including a built in motor temperature sensor with a slew of other features that can only be utilized when connecting to EcoSmart Live. Some of these features aren't available on the prototype. This pump is also going to feature some controllable float switches that'll help you control all other sorts of things that used to annoy you. Shut off your radions or lower the intensity when the water level decreases. Maybe you don't want your vortex to start blasting bubbles when the water level goes down in the tank. You could tell this by the level of water going up in your sump. Maybe you want to use this as a closed loop pump and adjust the flow throughout the day. Tune your feed mode so that we'll just hover the level right inside the return line without putting water into the tank causing food to go down the overflow or making bubbles come back down the return line and into the sump. Make your skimmer go crazy because your sump level goes up. The pump and the driver are also now smart enough to maintain a specific amount of flow that you set within the tank. For any number of reason that the head pressure increases, the pump will get the signal from the driver that it is okay to go ahead and ramp up the speed again to maintain a specific set flow in the tank. We're also going to get error reporting, pump status, pump failure notifications, maybe there's a blockage, you'll get an email, text message, and battery backup within EcoSmart Live. The pump body housing itself measures seven and a half inches long by four and a half inches wide by six and a quarter inches tall. Now the flow specs are 12,000 liters per hour. That roughly translates to about 3,170 gallons per hour. Also some other things about this pump is that the driver is made right here in the USA. The mean well power supply is the best that money can buy, but the whole package is assembled right here in the USA and warrantied by Ecotech Marine. Full disclosure on this video, I own and have owned the Waveline DC 12000 for several months and it's what I've been using on my garage system. It's just what I have, and that's the comparison because the Vectra L1 is rated at 12,000 liters per hour, and so is the Waveline, and that's what I have. So that's what all these comparisons coming up are based off of. If you have a DC pump that is rated at 12,000 liters per hour and you do a comparison video, please leave a comment below so that we can check that out. All right, guys, this is what you've been waiting for. Let's get to the unboxing of the brand new Ecotech Marine Vectra L1. New return pump or closed loop pump. Bubble wrap. They told me that this would be a good replacement for my Waveline DC 12000. Okay, it looks like somebody was playing with it already because there's water on the fittings. I'm, I'm mostly concerned about this outlet. How am I gonna plumb it into <laughs> this here? Um, I went and picked up an inch and a half female adapter and the rest of my plumbing is an inch and a quarter so I got a reducer and boom just threads right on i'm going to be putting this in the sump i suppose that you could use the fitting if you notice there was an o-ring on here on the outlet if you have one inch pvc that you're planning to run on this great but with the pump this powerful i feel that that might be a little bit restrictive so i just went out and bought a couple of bucks worth of PVC fittings, uh, inch and a half. If the rest of your plumbing system, like mine, is inch and a quarter, you can get a reducer. But if you're planning a system from scratch and you can go inch and a half with this pump, that might be the 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 hot ticket to really maximize the amount of flow. Has a new driver. It's got a heat sink on the back of it, and as you can see, it's going to be. Um, capitalizing on that same technology that they developed, the quiet drive technology within this driver itself. With the quiet drive technology and this pump, more flow and it's going to be quieter. There's going to be an area here for a float switch. Let's say the sump level, uh, the water level in your sump rises too much. You have a remote float switch, whether it's reed or optical, that's going to send a signal to here to do whatever you want. Um, when you set it up, you're going to need to calibrate it to your system and I'm not sure if I'm going to have that ability on here. Let's, let's take a look at some of the other goodies. Here's the next thing we've pulled out of the bubble wrap. We're going to need this power supply. 
I'm sure that yours won't ship like this, but it looks like, you know, this is definitely the stuff prototypes that are made of. We got some shrink tube on there and into the driver to power it. This side, that looks pretty legit. This is waterproof. Heck yeah. I don't want anything damaging my driver, but I'm going to try and be smart and mount it like that driver and power supply. I'm hoping that water will never get to this, but it's good to know that they thought ahead and made it waterproof. Here's a close up on the, the two connectors. This is the wave line. I don't like how this locking nut can slip all the way down the cord. Um, the Vectra L1 is nice, stays put. And here's something else. Um, there's five connectors on the Vectra L1, whereas everything else has three connectors. These two extra connectors are for a thermistor that actually measures the temperature of the motor itself. There's other models of pumps out there that will make assumptions based off the driver temperature that the motor is probably overheating. But with the Vectra, we're actually getting information about how uh, about the temperature of the motor itself. Without this, it would be pretty sketchy running um, this type of pump in an external environment or as a closed loop where, where the motor block is out of the sump, out of the water, and you have a high risk of uh, failure due to uh, overheating. I'm also told that this uh, pigtail is going to be considerably longer on the production model so don't fret about that nice we got a mounting bracket for oh yeah something that I'm super happy about <laughs> this is the same dri um, size driver as the MP40 so they're probably gonna start selling these brackets for mounting as well so you could do it on everything Comes with some screws, or at least mine did. Ha 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 ha. Man, that's sleek looking. I like it that I'm not trying to pick on Waveline or anything, it's just what I happen to have. But I think most things that are designed for uh, mounting, you'll be able to see the screws. I really like this design. And here's the power supply. This is what they ship me with the prototype, but what actually ships in retail, uh, maybe I'll get to show you later. Maybe you'll have to wait for an announcement with more product pictures from Ecotech or another product test team member. So the glue should be dry now. So let's see what it can do. This is my 140 gallon test tank. I've got the Waveline and the Vectra L1 side by side submersed in the tank. I'm gonna turn on the Vectra First, is that on? Oh crap. You wouldn't think it. But that's the only thing on is the Vectra. I'm gonna turn on the wave line now. Dang. The Waveline is a quiet pump, to be sure, but the difference is, is I can hear it. The Vectra, I didn't hear it at all. They're talking about putting a lockout on this, so after you dial in the, the flow on your system, you should be able to push a button on here and hold it, so that if you accidentally bump the driver, it's, it's not going to mess with your, your dialed in and tweaked system. I ended up hooking up the 140 um, to the same pump. The 450 is going on it. Um, and one really interesting thing that I wanted to point out is that the driver has um, some pretty fancy technology to where when I started to close this valve um, to push more flow over to the 140, the driver picked up on the increased head pressure and then increased the speed of the pump. Um, that's pretty stinging cool. So it was already turned up all the way to the max, but as soon as I increase the head pressure, um, the flow is reduced, so the wattage that the pump consumes 
also decreases. So the driver tells the motor, hey, it's safe to go ahead and increase the speed again. So it bumps it up even more. And I could actually hear an audible change just by closing off that valve a little bit to send more flow over to the 140. So the pump is trying to maintain constant levels of flow. I cannot wait to get this hooked up to EcoSmart Live and start playing around with some of the other features once it's a production model. Like I said, this is a prototype, so there's no RF module or chip in it and um, no float switches yet, but coming soon. Okay guys, so stay tuned for part two of the video where I'm gonna do some decibel readings across the different pumps that I have to really demonstrate how quiet this Vectra L1, which does 12,000 liters an hour compared to Brand X, <laughs> the wave line that I have, and who knows, maybe something else, where we can actually see how much more quiet it is in an external environment. We already got a preview of how quiet it is underwater, but now let's see, taking those pumps and putting them outside of the water, how loud they are.